Nigerian diplomatic missions grappling with debt, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, cries out. And the polling unit will take shine off rigging, says a report. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anikon. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, raised concerns over growing indebtedness faced by Nigerian diplomatic missions all over the world. Mustafa made this known in Abuja during an inauguration of the Presidential Committee on the review of number and strategy for resourcing Nigeria's diplomatic missions worldwide. The committee saddled with the mandate of reviewing all pre previous reports uh, on the establishment of foreign missions and measures taken to effectively and economically manage Nigeria's mission, and also to identify challenges facing those missions and make appropriate recommendations on their sustainability. He stated this, uh, that the lingering indebtedness being faced by the foreign missions has affected the nation's in integrity negatively. Well, joining us to discuss and break this down is Eugene Abels, he's the executive director of the Extra Step Initiative and Catch on a a Public Affairs Analyst. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank Great. you for having me. Great. L let me start with you, um, Eugene. Uh, this is not the first time that um, this concern has been raised. Uh, a, a few, uh, I think in 2020, um, the same issue was being raised where the um, Foreign uh, Secretary, Mr. Geoffrey Nyema, talked about the fact that lack of funding is somewhat keeling our foreign um, you know, diplomatic offices across the country. And my question is, could this also affect the way that we're being viewed by the world at large? Yeah. Um, for you to choose... Uh this uh, foreign policy is a major component of how a nation lives because you need to have you need to have a proper perspective on how you want the world to deal with you <laughs> and um, and in doing this nations sit down and, uh, and make a strategic appraisals on the people they want to deal with those they want closer established missions in those places. It is not done based on the initial drama of independence, which a lot of uh, countries that get independent in the 60s went and uh, did. After that, when the recession happened after the windfall of 1973, a lot of nations had to wind down missions which they had no business keeping. Uh, but the Nigerian case has become very pathetic because we have tried to use the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the diplomatic setting in Nigeria has been politicized. It is used for political compensation. So the, it is no longer as professional it was supposed to be and it used to be. So the issue of funding now begins to arise because there's a proliferation of embassies all over the world and there's no clear cost strategy on how to fund them. And there's no clear cost strategy to fund them there's no clear cost strategy on how to measure them uh, because they're just um, political appointees who are there. And this started with the Third Republic. And once it went political for, for political patronage, the things we're seeing today is not surprising. That most of the, the most expensive missions that we've had uh, mostly domiciled in Europe, Asia, and the Americas. Um, and of course, Japan is also, you know, like literally top on that list. And you made mention of the fact that this has become something, uh, some sort of a settling for the boys. But when we look at our foreign um, policy, because you see for certain countries, their foreign policy is so properly spelt out that, you know, it, it makes you even want to come from that country. But in Nigeria's case, we've seen countries, um, you know, eject us from our embassies. We've seen all kinds of things happen to embassies in certain places. I think in DRC, DRC we had an eviction happen uh, for one of those embassies. 
And we also saw another in, one, uh, I think, in a European country. And so I'm, I'm really asking, um, when we set up these missions, what exactly should be um, at the center of it? What I mean, again, is why are we setting up these missions? For what exactly is the end point at the end of the day? For example, if we have the U.S. in Nigeria and we see all of the things that are happening um, through the U.S. mission in Nigeria, can we say same of Nigerian missions wherever you know they find themselves? Um, we, they, they're supposed to be like a foot in the door in those nations because we want to deepen relationships and also enable our citizens in those places uh, have better access, like a source of protection or better access for the things they're supposed to get back home. Then it's also, it, in deepening relationship, it makes it easy for issues of trade, for cooperation, for cultural cooperation, and other aspects of nation building. But in the Nigerian case, we, there is no measurement. The, where most of those missions were created because they were looking for avenues where they could compensate people. You might need to go back up to the, um, the, third, the beginning of the third book in the year 1999 and see the number of the proliferation of missions that occurred. If, if, if I ask you today, what is the policy, policy direction of Nigeria? You don't know. If you had asked me in 1986, in 1982, I would tell you that our foreign policy direction was that we're non-aligned and that we'll be African-centric and we will drive the frontline movement for the independence of Zimbabwe and the rest of those nations. But today, nobody knows. Even if you speak with the diplomats, they don't know. Mm. I can bet I, this rot has been there. And fortunately, I, was, I had a, a stint in public service in the sense that while I was in the, on the amnesty program and I had students all over the world. There was an, a, an embassy in Europe that didn't even have a phone number. And then there were people there earning salaries and allowances. Really? So, first of all, it tells you where we are as a nation. When the, your budgeting process cannot provide funding for people whom you've employed to represent you and do a job for you. Wow. So, I, I don't know where to put my hand on this. It's not a new thing. I, I saw the uh, SGF's comments that he's setting up a comment. I don't need to set up a committee to review what's happened. This is a baby of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We need to push it back to them and allow them to do their jobs so that those who are not professional diplomats should be removed from the service. Let's allow professionals who have grown through the service, who have been trained for these jobs, to do their job. Then when we do that, we just downsize the number of missions we have. We don't need to have mission everywhere. Mm -hmm. You don't even have a foreign policy direction. Why are you all over the place? Mm -hmm. And you're all over the place and you cannot afford the, what it takes to keep those places. It is amusing. And um, it's amusing because when we had very little as a nation, back in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, you didn't hear these kind of things. I want, yeah. Yeah, and today you're talking of billions of dollars of petrol dollars. And you're enabled to do basic things like planning, budgeting, and um, funding. Ah. <laughs> I can imagine. Let me come to you, uh, Mr. Nunuju. It's interesting because the reps, as we speak, the House of Representatives um, in, in August had uh, you know, asked that the um, foreign missions be probed on the m amount of monies that they spent outside the budget. And this was about 13 billion naira. Now, on the one hand, they're saying we cannot afford to fund this, you know, missions across the, uh, across the world. But then the House of Representatives is saying the one that we've given to you, you're yet to be able to explain to us what you use these monies for. Um, but again, Eugene said something that was very catching. He said um, that no, we don't have a foreign, a foreign policy direction. And if this has been politicized, knowing Nigeria, where we always pick up from where the other person, you know, stopped in terms of the negatives, is this or will this or can this ever be stopped, being that this has been highly politicized as opposed to having a sense of direction? Well, we're discussing about... Nigeria missions. A Nigerian mission will represent Nigeria, and that's what it is. 
I do not think they have done anything that does not represent what Nigeria has become. The international missions are reflective of who you are internally at home. Oh dear, uh, Mr. Nunuju, I think we're having a connection issue with you. We're unable to hear you. You're breaking up. Um, I do not know why that is, but I'm going to try again. It's struggling. And there's no need really not to work. Oh dear, apologies. Um, Mr. Nunuju, unfortunately... I can hear you. We, I can hear you. I can hear you. We couldn't hear anything hear you were saying. Yes, now we can hear you. Good. What would you ask? Yes, um, you were trying to say that, you know, what's happening with our foreign missions is a reflection of what's happening in the country. I think that's where we lost you. Well, missions represent their principles. Nigerian mission across the world is representative of the road we have back home in Nigeria. Nigeria is challenged. It's not possible to seek that the foreign missions will run in. I think we lost you again. Uh, let me go back to um, Eugene. Eugene, I want to quote something um, that some analysts have said about how detrimental what's happening with our foreign missions can be to the country in itself. Um, well, they're saying that not just the fact that this poor funding is detrimental to the long-term ambitions of the country, um, but that you know, we should see it as a reflection of the country's economy. But really, is it just about that? Because we've seen these foreign missions continuously expand every other day. We saw what happened under the Buhari administration where certain generals and um, leaders of the defense corps were sent as ambassadors to certain countries. Uh, many people actually didn't like the idea, but we've seen that happen. And so, some analysts have said that we send diplomats abroad to enjoy themselves as opposed to, um, you know, chatting a course for Nigerians. But let's talk about the sufferings of Nigerians abroad. Now, we're not talking about the ones who've broken the law, but those people who suffer as a result of the fact that our missions outside the country are unable to speak on their behalf. And we've seen uh, Bike Dabri Erewa go back and forth uh, on, you know, either social media or even in the press about certain things that have happened. Nigerians have been killed. They've been rough handled. Some of them have, you know, one way or the other been treated badly. Uh, but then our foreign, uh, our foreign uh, missions have not necessarily been able to wade in as opposed to if we were that country's, you know, um, national here in Nigeria. They would have, there would have been a swift response. Uh, why do you think that not just about the funding, but our relations with, for, you know, in foreign countries seems to be pretty weak? Well, just like Dr. Kati said, um, the, the missions, the state of our missions abroad is a reflection of our society. Number two, um, the National Assembly people trying to probe uh, what they have done with uh, the monies that were supposedly budget for, budgeted for. The last time I saw the president in the National Assembly, I saw them clapping. And in eight years, I've not seen them ask for a performance review of the previous budget. If you do a performance review of the previous budget, you will know if actually funds were disbursed to these agents, to these missions then, before you begin to ask what they did with the money. I expect that the National Assembly, after passing budgets, before new budgets are approved, should ask for performance perform and review and, made, and it should be made public so we know what percentage of the budget was actually performed on and uh, how much uh, and what were the reasons for the aspects that were, there was no performance, uh, if there were no releases on. So this enables you to ask the appropriate questions. Bringing it to the, the state of the missions categorically tells you that they, they said the, they, um, the missions are unable to provide consulate services to Nigerians abroad. If you try to get a Nigerian passport abroad, it will cost you not less than a hundred thousand naira. Trust me on that. Yes, and um, you will probably be on a very long key. In most nations, you might not be able to do that. Yeah, and um, so naturally, 
they, they will not use their hands to do jobs which which they are not funded for. So nothing is going to, we should expect nothing as long as the fundamentals which has to do with budgeting, which has to do with releasing, which has to do with performance management, which has to be which has to do with the government government's perspective on its foreign policy and how it attends it, it plans to attend to the needs of its people in that country. All of these are supposed to add up. I'll put there's something on the front burner which every Nigerian is pretending not to see. Why would Dubai ban Nigerians from having visas? Today, 542 people have lost their jobs who found their way at their own instance. Each person in Nigeria fits for people have just been brought back. What is the position of the Nigerian embassy in Dubai? What are the contending issues which they are unable to resolve? By now, we should hear the ambassador in the United Arab Emirates making statements. We should expect to see the, our foreign affairs minister going to Dubai to make convers to have conversations on the issues that are causing the United Arab Emirates to react the way they are reacting. And if you, that's if you have all of this can happen when you have a plan. The, the, the agencies are properly synergized, and the things and the fundings that are supposed to be provided are provided. Even if we, even if it is about the inability of the airlines to move the over seven hundred million dollars that are trapped in Nigeria, a conversation seriously taken, led by a foreign affairs minister, supported by the finance people and the central bank, if by visiting them, appealing to them, will have averted most of those things. So when if we continue on this trajectory, no nation is going to take us seriously. It naturally tells a picture of who you are as a country, and investments naturally will run away. I'll give you a case in point. Recently, I was in DROC, and uh, the Nigerian embassy there is being managed by a very seasoned um, Nigerian. And um, beyond that, when we did our findings in terms of investment, it's just because we found out that the rule of law there is very weak. Anything can happen. It made us develop cold feet about considering investments in that country. Your mission is a reflection of your nation, whether you like it or not. That's where measurement begun, begins from. How your people are treated is a reflection of how efficient your consulate services are in that country. Trust me, we know how these things are and they can be very cold. Uh, Dr. Katch, I think we have you now on the phone. So can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Great. Um, Eugene has laid more more on that foundation that he started on. Now, let's. it's time for us to look back inwards. Um, looking again at how governance, you know, you know, happens here in Nigeria. We're getting ready for an election in a few months. Um, and we see that so many things are, you know, going or being swept under the carpet. For example, we have the issue of the oil thefts, the... Um, the destruction of that oil vessel that was found by the army and of course the army chief telling us that um, there was no need for an investigation. Um, we've also seen other kinds of impunity take place within the country. Um, how do we, where do we even start from to mop up the process? Because if, if we are truly a reflection of what, or if our foreign missions is a true reflection of what's happening in our country, where do we start to, you know, need these issues in the bar, especially now that we're getting ready for elections? Mr. Nuju, can you hear me? Oh, goodness. I don't think you can. Can you hear me? I think that we lost that uh, connection again. Dr. Nuju, can you hear me? Unfortunately, we lost him again. I think that um, there's some problematic connection where he is. So, Eugene, back to you again. We're getting ready for elections. There's a momentum on social media. There's a momentum on the roads. There's a phenomenon of, you know, that we've seen all kinds of movements, whether it be the articulate or the bat or the um, obidati movement. We're seeing the, or the quanqua seers. Um, how do these movements or what will these movements do for us as a people? Because we're following. Followership is great. But what will these people do for us or what have they done previously that should make people look to them? for a change or a kind of restructuring that Nigeria needs? 
Uh, we, we, the, the campaigns are a, a printer. You know, it gives you hope that, um, because of the state of things, that there's, uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Whether you get to the light is a different matter, but you've seen it. And um, even though some of them have been recycled, uh, but, and the new entrants of the blue are disruptors, it's a, they, they, it, we're looking for avenues to let off steam because there's so much tension and so much hardship in the land. So everybody is hoping and desiring that, look, you know, it's always greener on the other side, that this other side of people who are coming in are likely to change the perspective of things that are about happening. But for me, I would still like to advise uh, the electorate that we must stop this um, mob kind of thinking and begin to interrogate processes. And in interrogating processes, you should be able to have a con I'll just tell you one other thing. Um, Sunik, the new Prime Minister of England, Rishi of the United Rishi. Kingdom, mm. made a speech, did a ceremonial uh, representation of, of the a Hindu festival season before I went into the down into Downing the Street. What was trending in Nigeria is the Hindu Hindu um, the symbolic things and candles which he put um, before the, the, the entrance Wali, to the, ten the Wali celebration. Street. Yes. Yes. So people for most people, nobody is discussing the content of his speech. The fact that. Uh, a colored man and an Asian has been able to reach, get to that level of competence to be chosen to lead the United Kingdom. Um, what does he represent? Yes, he's rich, he's married to also to a very rich family. And um, what does he represent? How does he affect us as Nigerians? Since Britain is the major stakeholder in the in nations we deal with, our story cannot be told without Britain in the past, today, and in the future. So. Nobody is interrogating those things. People are more interested in the juju part of the conversation, in the optics. Yeah. So when you bring it down to the political terrain now, no, people are not interrogating the manifestos, engaging this take, uh, these people who have put themselves forward to run. People are not interrogating them and asking, look, what are you going to do differently? Why, where, why are we where we are? Instead, you'll be hearing uh, you. People suddenly have lost interest in debates. Instead, they lose their tempers and begin to abuse you. Mm. So I'd just like to call people that if we do not change and begin to interrogate the value chain of whatever we do, they will continue to shortchange us. Today, we are left with those four people because we refuse to realize that as a nation, we should have risen up, even if it means marching to the National Assembly, to insist that there should be no delegate election. Then we'll have this. The space will have open. But we have sixteen. We have almost sixteen, if not eighteen, of these presidential candidates, uh, and and we just keep talking about four. Could it? I mean, many have blamed us, the media, for just only showcasing these four, as opposed to giving other people balance and fair hearing. So, is it just these four people because this is what we are presenting, or we're not giving other people an opportunity because they're more than four? Yes, it is so because we didn't interrogate the process. We should have refused the insertion of delegate election. People do not join political parties for delegates to represent them. They join political parties because they want to, they believe in that through this vehicle, I should be able to express myself. We got carried away, forgetting that once the governors hijack the parties through the delegate system, it is what they put before you vote for. By the way, in Nigeria, we don't vote for human beings. We vote for insignias, umbrella, broom, fish, bro um, computer, boots, and the rest of them. That's why, if you look now, a very important part of the political process is ignored. People only look at the president-to-be and the governors-to-be. Those who make the laws, those who drive the manifesto, which the man at the, head, at the, at the leader of the party is pursuing, we don't know. We just... We just some print the party insignia because their photographs are not there. These are changes we will have insisted on before we went into these 2023 elections. And with the way it is, well, we've come halfway with beavers 
and uh, with the conversations that are here. But we need to go back to the old ways, mm -hmm. whereby you need to consult every member of a party. There should be no delegate election. That's why the governors are feeling cocky and believing that they own us. Yeah, technically, they do own us because they spend our money. They even tell us that it's my money. It's my state. They don't say our. <laughs> but you see, the pundits would keep saying that, oh, this is the year where we're all more involved in the political process, um, that there might be a change. But then we still see the types and shadows of what we've seen in, in time past. Like you have rightly mentioned, we're following movements. We're following symbols as opposed to persons. We're not asking the questions that we ought to be asking. And for a time like this, where Nigeria is, you know, almost at the brink, um, I wonder why that is not necessarily our, our, you know, what we were putting forward. Again, with the level of impunity, I bring that back again, because even with the case of the the missions, you know, the National Assembly is saying. It is a practice where um, these missions overexpend their allocations with impunity and that they think that this should be frowned upon, even though in, in this case it's a pot calling kettle black. But this impunity is reflected within and without and nobody questions nothing. We only grumble about it and then we keep it moving. I mean, how optimistic are you about the 2023 elections? Well, if it happens, we will be happy that it has happened and we hope that um what do you mean by if what do you mean by if it happens do, i mean anything can happen hmm. i'm a person i'm pessimistic anything can happen anything can happen there are things staring at us in the face there are issues of insecurity um 20 or 30 percent of the country is flooded we don't know when the floods will reside we don't have more water is coming and insecurity is taking almost another 10 or 15 percent of the country. Um, constitutionally, will you, able to, will you be able to conduct elections in that kind of mm -hmm. atmosphere? Because, uh, like in the world of Biasa today, you can't conduct an election if the water does not leave by February or March. People are believing that the water will walk away. No, it's there. It's even almost threatening local government in Lagos State. Now, then you also have the ambushments that are taking place now whereby all manner of cases have been filed in court, which have, some, most of them are pre-election matters, and they're, high, they're being hidden there. And uh, you are not seeing people, like those who are um, um, contestants are skeptical about engaging fully in campaigning because they're not sure what the outcomes of what the judiciary will, will come up with. We've seen things like that on the eve of an election. Suddenly, um, a judgment is given. Recently, we saw one that has to do with 2019, which concerns the APC in River State. The judiciary, we must, we cannot allow things to happen like the judiciary is not supposed to be part of the political process. It's supposed to be an aspect where interpretations should be made. And uh, all the cases concerning an electoral process should be time bound so that they do not exceed certain stages of the elections, so that there's an equal playing field for people. So what I can, what people can do now, is, what people do is, I allow you to take your form, but I go to court and file one matter against you, and then sure I get victory. And so by the time you are coming and struggling with the courts, I've been campaigning as an advantage over you. We need to check out all this. Well, with all of these things, I'm pessimistic. Until the elections come, then I'm sure that we are having them. For now, okay. the issues of security, we send the advisory from the United States government. We've seen the attitude of the information minister, which is wrong, which is wrong. And instead of him to have left the speeches to be done by the DS, um, director of state security and the police, which they've done properly, and, they, and their statements were properly couched and had granted confidence to the people, and he comes to tribalize it. I don't know if he's, if it, if he's running for election, uh, so which is wrong to tell you that I know they have a very lenient boss, as um, President Buhari is the most lenient president in the world. He never fires people. So that's why they can behave the way they are behaving. Now, bringing it back to the issue of budget and the issue of overspending as claimed by the National Assembly, they cannot claim overspending when most of the missions are claimed are not being funded. Hmm. So where are they getting the money they're spending? Now, because for the funds they are making from pass providing consulates, uh, passport, visas, and so on, back home, where are the rules for accountability? Mm. 
Well, there are lots of unanswered questions. We, we cannot keep acting the way we're acting. The National Assembly should stop playing the ostrich. They know what the issues are. If you do not seek for a review, a quarterly review of the performance of the budget, if you do not sanction people for carrying out those performances, okay. uh, then you show that there's performance on those budgets. And you know it's linked to revenue. If those things are not done, if you're there pretending mm -hmm. that you do not realize that you're losing almost 800 barrels of oil, wow. which will affect your revenue, then you do not deserve to be in the National Assembly. The other day I was watching them, um, them and the administration minister and so on, they were all being sentimental that why air, foreign airlines are acting the way they're acting. The IATA man was reminding them, you cannot be owing 700 and something million dollars and expect people to keep quiet. One million dollars is seven and forty million naira. It's I, not beans. I yeah. guess. I guess that. I guess if we sit, uh, if, if we continue to talk about our problems, we probably not get out of here today. But um, I guess that uh, we're also going to ho hope and rely on Hail Marys until the elections, uh, until we decide that we're going to take you know strong steps to make sure that things are turned around. But I want to say thank you. Eugene Abels is the executive director, Extra Step Initiative. And of course, thanks to Katja Nunuju, who's a public affairs analyst. Unfortunately, uh, the connection didn't let him uh, stay on the conversation. Thank you so much, Eugene, once again. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll take a quick break. Now, when we get back, we'll be discussing the Electoral Act and how it, it affects rigging in 2023. Stay with us.